How are we, lads? You all, all right? right? Good, good. Kill looks depressed. I'm looking menacing. I right, love that. I, I I'm not very intimidated. <laughs> all right, this is episode 36. We're back. I uh, just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who tuned in last week with uh, great uh, reviews of our Football Manager special. So another big thanks to Greg for taking the reins on that. It was a lot of work and it paid off. Thank you for engaging with that. Thank yes, Greg. Thank you very much. Uh, with the feedback and everything positive and people wanting more, uh, we've got a few lined up in the future, so stay tuned for that. But this week we have got... You go for it. If you've got any ideas of what you'd like, please tell yeah. us. Comment section, or Instagram, Twitter inbox, or just tweet in general. Comment, subscribe, ring the wee bell. I don't know why Greg was playing the triangle. (laughs) (laughs) Right, okay, so this week we've got a few things to discuss, and we've got an exciting new game, so make sure you watch all the way through, eh? Keep your attention up. (laughs) Right, so obviously in Scotland, the League Cup is... Is starting very, very soon, so we are going to have a League Cup preview. Starting this weekend? Yes, it is. This is so, recorded on the 12th, by the way. Yes, yeah, so Wednesday uh, afternoon for a change. To be fair, it's been a bit of a mix recently. Yeah, it has. We like to, like to keep all our options open. Right, anyway, our first question I'm going to pose to you is, are you about to say something, Greg? I was going to say, I'm not going to be here for the League Cup. Are you looking forward to the League Cup group stage? Do you like it? Get some summer football under your belt. I'm looking forward to it because it feels like it's been ages. I still think the group stages are a bit meh, but I'm not going to complain too much. It's more football. Looking it's forward to... That's our friendlies. Yeah, true. They're just qualified looking... friendlies. Yeah. Looking forward to Motherwell coming down to Palmerston next Tuesday night. We'll be there. That's what... Yes, we will be there. And we are debating uh, doing a little vlog, so we'll see if that comes to fruition. Anyway, how do we think Queens will do on that note? Um, uh, good. Should get second. I'm not convinced they will. I don't know the group. I'm just kind of. I, being... don't know. <laughs> I think going we'll finish the... third. Yeah, going by the how we played in the friendlies, I'm not too sure how confident I am. I think it might take a bit of a while to get the ball rolling, so to speak. I think more at home makes it easier because maybe get a, a penalties win. It does, but they they finished last season strongly, and you know you'd probably be looking at them. You know, I I I think I'm tempted to back them for top six this season, Motherwell. So just for anyone, also we didn't we started this podcast in uh, the winter time during the World Cup, but for anyone who doesn't really know the structure of the League Cup, I'm sure we've talked about it before, but with the group stages, if it goes ends a draw, it goes to a penalty shootout, and then the winner of the penalty shootout gets an extra point, so they essentially get two points. The loser gets one point. The loser gets it's one like point. Ice hockey style, possibly? I think that's where they've stole it from. It's quite exciting, actually. I quite like it. But at the same time, it's good for we te- like we are teams. So like for, for Queens who maybe would be battling against like the Motherwell, it's great for that. But then it's a bit of a kick in the teeth when, you know, did East Colbride not beat us in penalties a few years ago? Mm-hmm. It's a bit of a kick in the teeth, though, that you know, if you're a wee side who's fought tooth and nail for a draw, you then a lottery for penalties, and the bigger side still get an extra point for point than you. It's a bit. Yeah. yeah. I'm not hand, a fan. I like the excitement, but I get the I get the point for both sides. There, there's an incentive to win the penalty shootout as well. I can you always want yeah. to win them, but you know what I mean. Uh, and yeah, the other the other game, you know, Queens also have a trip to Hamden. Ooh, I Mini Hamden. Uh, Hamden Hamden Junior. Hamden Hamden Junior. It's basically a toddler. I'm sorry. You can't fit anybody in it. Have you seen what they've done to the stand? That that stand, the the clubhouse, they've invested millions in it. Looks rubbish. Yeah, so uh, obviously that's happening. We're keeping our eyes on Annan as well, being our local team. Uh, I, for the life of me, can't remember who's in Annan's group. Um, I had a look and I've already forgotten. Uh, Kilmarnock, Wraith, Dunfermline, and Albion. That's all right. Who's the big team? I wasn't. Kilmarnock. Kilmarnock. Yeah. Could be them. Dunfermline, So Annan at home have Wraith and Albion. So Albion, you'd like to think again that that's not an easy grip for them, really, is it? 
probably you third again. Nah. Fourth. I, I don't think they'll beat Dunfermline. I don't think they'll beat Wraith. Maybe get away two points against Wraith, being at home. Just that top two goes through, isn't it? Uh, it's top one and then the best second three place. second places. Yeah, some of that. We got through our group um, last year and then got Rangers. We did. We? we got through on goal difference, though, being the third best second place team. You really need to win. You really need to have nine or ten points to get through as a best second place side. Yeah. Because Annan went through as winners. Annan did go through as winners last year. Could be by Aberdeen. Right. Well, if I go through the and groups quickly, fine. if I go through the groups quickly, let's name the two teams we think are going to go through. Right, because it won't take too long. Right, Alloa, Ayr, St Johnston, Stenhouse, Muir, and Stalling Albion. Ayr, St Johnston for me. Mm, St Johnston yeah. and Ayr. Remember, of course, that, that second second doesn't guarantee you getting through, but this is who we're going to think is going to finish. Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. Maybe not guaranteed. Right, who do we think are going to finish first and second then? Right, I'm yeah, St Johnston, Ayr, surely. I'm the same. Right, Dundee United, Falkirk, Partick, Peterhead, and Spartans. Uh, depends how Thistle are. If Thistle continue kind of the run they had at the end of last season, Thistle have every chance of winning that group. If Dundee United yeah. are as terrible as they were at the end of last season, then Dundee United have a, could finish anywhere. I'm going for a wee party win, and then I think Falkirk might sneak a second there. I was going to say Dundee and Falkirk. Or Dundee United and right. Falkirk. Uh, Beacon... I, we think that one's open. Oh, we yeah. think that group's quite open. Very much so. Brecon, Clyde, Cove, Hamilton, Livingston. Uh, Cove and Hamilton will be interesting. I think Livingston surely romp home with that group. You'd think so. But yeah. you never know. Probably I think I'd agree. Yeah, I'd agree. Notably, um, last year a lot of the big teams went out, i.e. Hibs, St Mirren and St Johnston. There's obviously extenuating circumstances with Hibs with the Rocky Bashidi situation, but, you yeah. know. And Lee Johnson. <laughs> Yeah, yes. Lee Johnson crying his eyes out. He'll he'll be happy. He doesn't have to play in the group stages this year because they're in Europe. They get a bye. Yeah, Jimmy. That that's the other thing we should say about these group stages. Actually, like we are saying, all oh, their glorified friendlies. It doesn't mean anything to anyone, which isn't entirely fair, given that the five teams who are in Europe just go into the second round, and everyone else has to play the glorified friendlies. It's a bit unfair. And they're playing yeah. Europe, so they're still playing games anyway. Not Celtic, but obviously you can't have the rest of them not and them not, so because they're straight yeah. group stages. Anyway, right, FC Edinburgh or Edinburgh City or whatever the new name Back is. Back to Edinburgh City. Back to Edinburgh City. On here it's FC Edinburgh. Uh, Greenock, Morton, Kelty Hart, Ross County, and Stranra. In Ross Scotland. County, don't win that, I'll be surprised. Yeah, I think Morton are going to come second place. Oh, the dog's back. Bark, bark, bark. Uh, Ross County and probably Morton. I mean, yeah. Right, Group E, Airdrieonians, Bonnie Rig, Dunbarton, Dundee and Inverness, Caledonian, Thistle. Uh, Inverness, depending on how they start, they've got to be favourites for the league, so you'd bat them to do well here. Scottish <laughs> Cup finalists last year. Dundee seem to have recruited quite well, might do all right. Airdrie don't seem awful. Again, that's one. That's one of the groups that you could go. There could be a shock here. There's some of them that you look at and you go, maybe not. But like Dundee United, Partick Falkirk, and Dundee Inverness Airdrie, you could go. Yeah, fair enough. Dundee and Inverness, I'm saying. I'm like to go with the two championship teams, with Inverness and Airdrie. Mm -hmm. oh, I think Dundee are gonna struggle to start. Right, uh, Albion, Annan, Dunfermline, Kilmarnock, and Wraith. Kind of touched on that. I think it'll become Arnick and Yeah, definitely. I'm going to go Kelly Annan. No, I don't know. I think Annan might struggle this year. They're going to lose all those times at Palmerston as well, so that won't help them. Uh, right, Group G. Uh, East Fife, Elgin City, Motherwell, Queen of the South and Queen's Park. I mean, we've, we've said this, Motherwell and Queen's Park, isn't it? Motherwell and Queen of the South for me. The South Queen's Park. <laughs> the Tin of Queens. I like to be realistic. Right, and then that finishes off Group H is Arbroath, Cowden Beath, Forfar, Montrose and St Mirren. There are some tasty derbies in that, Arbroath, Montrose and Forfar. 
Can I just add in here, speaking about glorified friendlies, did you see that uh, Morton hosted St Mirren last week? Yes, and then Police Scotland didn't let St Mirren lift the trophy that they had as a pre-season game. Police Scotland said it was too big a risk because it's a local derby. Morton won to know. Did Morton win? Sorry, then they didn't <laughs> let Morton win the trophy. That helps. No, that was, that, was that was stated before the game. They said that they weren't doing it regardless. It didn't matter. It's it was... so stupid. Yes, yeah, so Martin won to so know. What, why was it a St Mirren fan moaning that they weren't allowed to lift the trophy? I don't well, know if St Mirren fan on Twitter them. moaning about it, but... That was probably prior. After the game. Yeah. Sure? Probably prior thinking that he'd won it. That's so stupid, though. Like, if you're going to let them have a pre-season friendly, at least let them lift the trophy. Ah, oh, well. Yeah, yeah, alternatively, yeah. don't have trophies for stupid pre-season games. That would be a better way around to doing it. Yeah. Definitely. Right, I'm thinking obviously St Mirren must be the favourites to win that group, but um, are both surely second. Yeah, again, it's another it's another one of the groups where you go. Yeah, I can't wait for a load of upsets and us to get all these wrong. But that that's that's the good thing about the League Cup group stage that there are there does tend to be some upsets because it's not a one-off game. You've got to play four of them, and if you're a Premiership side who hasn't really got their shit together yet. You need to get your shit together very quickly. Yeah. Right, well, I think that kind of... I, I would say, though, I said that, and now I'm looking where Dundee United finished in their group last year. Of course, they weren't, in a, they weren't even in the League Cup last year because they were in Europe. They were getting spanked by Alkmaar. <laughs> Despite winning 1-0 in the first leg. So, like, the teams that didn't do well last season were what? Hibs, who went out... St Mirren, you said. St Mirren, so two teams that finished in the top six and St Johnston, who didn't have the world's greatest season. Yeah. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, um, invited teams as well, Greg, you were talking about them before we came on. Yes, so obviously because there are teams in Europe, there tends to be three teams invited. Um, it's usually, the because it's based on the previous season's SPFL, it's usually... The winners of both the Highland and the Lowland League and then one of the second place teams because three teams get invited in. So last year it was Bonnie Reg, Fraserburgh who won the Highland League and Bucky who finished second. It tends to alternate between the Highland and the Lowland League. It should be the Lowland League's turn this year. Um, so the Spartans and Brechin both got invited in. Albion as the relegated team keep their place. And then the other invitation spot this year because it's the Lowland League's turn went to 15th place Cowdenbeath. Which riddle, doesn't make sense. That one. No, I have absolutely no idea why. Well, I've heard some theories why. Um, one of those obviously being um, that the B teams weren't eligible and they finished second and third. And then mm. in fourth, you've got Uni of Stirling and it's not term time, so it's not exactly easiest for them to get involved was an argument, which I'm not sure even stacks up. But then why was it not given to Trenent, who finished fifth, instead of 15th place? Up in 10 beat? places, yeah. Or just second in the Highland League, just to keep tradition. Well, yeah, that, that, that would mean it had to go like the other way around, because they tend to alternate, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't have been the world's worst suggestion. Let's give it the next two to the Golden League. Cowdenbeath finished 43 points behind Spartans last year, and they're still in the League Cup. You're going to win it. That'll be I'll like be surprised if they win one game because they didn't manage to last year. 10,000 to 1. Gotcha, um, right, so there we go. Anything else you want to say on that? I think we've kind of covered all the bases. Uh, I preferred it when it was regionalised. That's my only other comment. It hasn't Why been regionalised for two years now. We've had to play Elgin away both of those years. Bit annoying getting did back get being regionalised. Did get Aaron Annan as well that season though. We did. We've had Annan a couple of seasons for the League Cup. We've had, you know, Kilmarnock a few times. It's much easier, and I know the argument is it's the summer, it doesn't matter how far you're travelling, but it's still, we want to encourage away fans. If you're going to keep the group stage, at least regionalise it, because whoever it is on a Tuesday night, it's not fun. Yeah. Well, Elgin, isn't it? Is Elgin not one of the Tuesday nights? No. 
Elgin mm-hmm. for Queens is a Saturday, but there are going to be teams in there who are going to have to travel on a Tuesday night, and it's not going to be fun for their fans. Very much so. Yeah, yeah. That kind of brings it up to that. So, uh, one of our weekly segments at the minute, due to it being the off season, is our transfer roundup. So, I'm going to hand over to Kale for this one. Yeah, we'll just start at the top. Uh, Nicholas Jackson from Villarreal. Is... Nicholas Jackson. Who? Nicholas Jackson. Who? From Villarreal, yeah. get on to it. Plays for Villarreal, he did quite well last season. Eight year contract for 30 million. Well, 30 so Chelsea's, Chelsea's still doing eight year deals, even though FIFA said it doesn't count towards FFP. They've decided he's still worth one. Okay. Interestingly, he agreed to join Bournemouth, but he filled his medical, so couldn't he go? And then bossed for Villarreal. So. Any comments or then okay. Greg said who play times, but yeah, I don't know who he is. No, do I? But uh, I mean, the eight year contracts are quite a, a key component of that. He's a striker. This... Oh, he's a striker. That's at yeah. least all right. That's at least a position they could do with someone in. I was waiting on him to be another midfielder because they don't yeah. need them. I think he was one of the top scorers, but I don't know for sure. I wouldn't want to lie. Right, the ASMR starts with Greg's uh, keyboard, so he's, he's obviously looking it up. I'm not, just carry on. I'm looking yeah. to see, I was looking to see, I heard another Chelsea rumour, so I'm trying to find it. Find right. it. Um, Dominic Soboslai, might be wrong with that, has joined Liverpool for £60 million. Uh, You are very jammy. He will be absolutely fantastic in the Premier League. Look Highly to... rated. I might add, these are from the last two weeks, because we didn't do it last week. That's yes. why old news, but... Uh, he'll be fantastic. I'm very jealous he's not in Newcastle. Should... Yeah, I was going to say, I was speaking to uh, Matthew, sure again. He was saying uh, that you I made a point about you saying that you wanted him for Newcastle and he was very happy that he'd signed for Liverpool. He's got a Gerard tattoo. I found that out. So he was never going to join Newcastle. Did you see the Amer- did you see the chat GBT chant? The, the, the tune of American Pie is my, my oh, Dominic Sabbath's so life. <laughs> That's terrible. That should be a segment. Rating chat GPT Queen of the South chance. I made a few when I was drunk one night, to be honest with you. Oh, God. I'll get them out someday. 20 likes on this video and we'll show them next week. Dislike this video. Good 10 likes last week. We're getting it. We're we're moving on up, as Primal Screen once said. I'm going to make 20 accounts. Newcastle United play play that exact Primal Screen song after a win now. Much yeah. better than Queen of the South's I've Got a Feeling. Oh, away and don't talk a lot of rubbish. How'd I kick from chat? <laughs> this is coming from the same person that as soon as he's had about two pints, all you hear off his phone is dun 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 The intro to I Got a Feeling, if anyone didn't get it from that. I don't know he's, what you're on about. As soon as you've got a beer on his hand. Or the big cheese on his face, hence otherwise. Yeah, the next one is Mason Mount has joined Man United. For another sixty million, Chelsea have done well to extort some money out of Man United. Uh, I mean, I think they've got a good deal for it, considering it seems to be the English tax yet again. It's not a bad another, player, but it's not. But as you were sixty million, definitely not. No, another Chelsea youth player leaves. I don't know why, because it's one of their times. One of their better midfielders. Yeah, in the attacking. Well, he wasn't favoured by. Tuchel, he wasn't fancied by Potter, Lampard came back and Lampard didn't really fancy him so it's a sign that he's maybe just not up for it maybe wanted to leave for a while Get some more first team football then That video where he's got his blonde hair but then he's got brown the nerve, have you seen that? I've yeah. not It is a big hoo-ha, apparently he's had a video for ages, like his leaving video I mean that confirms that he's wanted out for a while Or maybe he's Already been forced Daddy's here yesterday yeah, right, go for it. Uh, Paul Torres has yeah. moved from Villa to Villarreal. Mm-hmm. The other way around, sorry. Yeah, Is to that... Villa, from Villarreal. For 33 million to join Emery again. Again, good player, will add a lot to the Premier League. 33 million isn't a horrendous figure, I would say. When you're, paying 60, when you're paying 60 million for Mount. And he's younger than I thought he was. I've just Googled that. He's like 26. So oh, he's not. I thought he was getting towards 30. 
player and his prime will do well. Played in Europe as well and everything yeah. else, so not bad. They're getting there, Villa. Getting there. Yeah, slowly but surely, I would say. This is one for Greg. Sandro Tonali. Tonali. Whatever. He's joined, but he didn't want to join. He wanted to stay. That's he he said that was all. He said rumours that he's unhappy at joining Newcastle are a load of rubbish. Just going what I've read. You're reading a load of rubbish. Yeah. It, it was sport bible, so. Ooh. I rest my case. I can't believe you said that. That's horrible. That was just sport bible. I don't know who it was. Oh, well. If he's in Galilee standard, it's our only trusted source. I would I, I prefer wouldn't... the courier. <laughs> what would you, you, you think about Tenali? Good sign. He's gonna be, be like I was saying uh, you know, I want Declan Rice or Shabashlai or we've somehow signed someone who I think is probably better than both of them. Did you see the photo of him in the Newcastle Airport with at Greg's? I think someone had it it was rather humorous. It was. Uh, that good side and I think he'll do well he obviously didn't seem too keen but you know who's he replacing the midfield though? No. Longstaff mm. as good him. as Longstaff was last season Longstaff's the person he replaces Newcastle need depth as well so any of this who does he replace well he's an option because Newcastle have to play in Europe now which they haven't done since the grand old days of Alan Pardew you make it sound like it's such a hardship oh they have to play in Europe now <laughs> I'm sorry, just because I don't want, you know, Emil Kraft playing right back in the Champions League. I can't believe we've got to Europe this season. I mean, I didn't expect it. Again, said with a big cheesy on his face. I, mean, I can't not grin. Listen, don't come back to me when you had Leon King playing at centre-back against Liverpool. That's that's when it really hurts. Mm, that was... yeah, such a hardship for you. At least we at least we wouldn't concede seven. And I hope that comes back to bite you. Yeah, we're, we're going to clip that. We're going to clip that for when they play in Europe. Someone cocky who's only just started playing in Europe again. Well, when the Champions League, it's fine. So it's okay. We didn't have to rely on Saudi money, but if you had Saudi uh, money, you would absolutely lap it up. Rangers if butts and babies. If butts and babies. Mummy and Daddy are fighting again. If butts and babies. <laughs> What do you mean F bucks and maybe it, you can't say if they had it? Well, it's better than being bought for a pound. I was waiting for that one, but you know, if that's just only come back, we'll move on. Right, who's next on your list? Uh, so this is a, a manager that PSG have got Luis Enrique for two years. Ooh. I don't know, they didn't have a manager, but and they, they, got, I, rid of Gal- they got rid of Gaultier to hire him. No, it, went, it all went quiet over there, I think, did it not for a wee while? Well, there was rumoured they were going to sack him in like March, and then they didn't. So they got to the end of the season, and he had to like he was definitely going. It's a good distraction from the Mbappe saga that they've employed the new manager who can tell Mbappe he's not leaving, and Mbappe can say yes, I am. Yeah, that's what we wanted to discuss in our time, but that seems to be quite a bit of a hoo ha at the minute. Yes. Yeah, he's a good manager from what I've heard. One. Absolutely a lot of mental from what I've heard. I mean, he's like a put of the. World Cup by Morocco, so... Did they not also win the Champions League Barcelona? Yes, I was thinking that. Did he? Yeah. Good for that. He's not got a date at PSG, though, is he? You never PSG know. Have, have a more than capable team. They just need to get over that hurdle, I think, of actually getting far enough. Too many egos. Oh. Spoil the stew. Uh, David De Gea's left Man U as well, 12, after his 12 seasons. About time, eh? I mean, um, he was a good keeper in his in his prime, maybe at the start, but it should have been prime. a long time ago. He's run out um, of prime. Not out of ages. Not. See, he's, sh- he's shaking. He's shaking. <laughs> I'm not. He's shaking. Just twenty likes on this video will get Kyle a case of prime. <laughs> a case. You're well, generous. You're lucky. You can have. Well. Oh, right. with Kyle. It says Onana. Well, What's my name? I've heard Onana's the, the big one being linked. Is he still at Ajax? Sh- Enter. Mm, Enter. Uh, I'm about three years behind, I think. Most I'm sure. Oh, Champions League final. Ooh. 
You were saying been banned for a while, was he not? That's when he's in it was Ajax and he moved to enter after his ban. Was he not yeah. doing like naughty, naughty steroids? Yes. That's a sin, that. I'm sure Man United fans will absolutely adore Onana when he comes out to the edge of the centre circle for no reason, like he seems to do every so often you watch him. If it works, it works. He has the his, his y- sweeper keeper. His Y button's uh, stuck in on his Xbox controller. Now, th- this is another one that... Um, Eric Ten Hag is just bringing back the Ajax squad that got to the Champions League final. Very much. They've not actually signed him yet, so they've stuck with Tom Heaton as number one for the foreseeable. Just Jack Butland. Well, obviously, it was a Crystal Palace player anyway when he was on loan, but apparently Man United wanted him. I heard a rumour. I don't know how true that is, but obviously, Rangers player now. Yes. Mm, better get their finger out to replace Tom Heaton because he's not very good. He was, but not anymore. Scott Carson. Well, again, they're both serving the same purpose, aren't they? They're countering as an English-trained player for the Champions League quota. That's the whole yeah. purpose they serve. Aye, but for that much money, you wouldn't mind. No. Probably not. Day none. It'd be all right. Megabox. Right, next on your yeah. list. Harvey Walker signs for Queens for a year after being a good, good little trialist. How was he? Um, the pace was there. The end product, not so much. But, I mean, I'm, we're kind of hoping that'll come out of him coming out of the, the, the actual competitive games. Had a lot of pace and he did look like he was confident on the ball, but he can beat a few, man. Do- few dodgy crosses and seemed a bit uh, hesitant to take any shots. But any Queen's player is hesitant to hit a shot that isn't inside the six areas of the 12-yard box. So... Uh, time will tell, but I mean, I don't think it was the worst signing in the world. He's a bit like Trio, right? just kind of runs at folk and beats them, then makes an arse out. So, the yeah, thing is, you can you can try and ingrain end product into him, yeah. They coughed it on the ball, just wasn't so much distributing it, yeah. And a again, being a try list, keen to impress, yeah. But he shows more in training, and then get you can get work done, as you said. So. Yep. Uh, yep. So yeah, I just see that thought it'd be worth talking about. Yep. Cal McGregor signs for Celtic five year deal. Yeah. Well, yeah. Is he a legend of Celtic? Yes. Would you say? Yeah, definitely. Is he's not quite Scott Brown though? But it's not far off. By the end of his five years, he will be. If he keeps winning trophies. He will be. Yeah. Which is well, obviously. Yeah. Another five see, in a row. See, you just want to throw in there. I see McCartney. Uh, signed on again. I don't think Celtic fans are too impressed. McCarthy? That's not what I said. That's not McCarthy. You said Mike McCartney. Paul McCartney said you on again. Paul or Linda. I like her burgers. Yes, indeed. You horrible boy. <laughs> <laughs> what you talking about? What is... <laughs> I'm more trying to work out if, they are, if he is dead. I don't think he is. No, she's not. She is. Oh, is she? No, she's been dead for a bit, quite a while. Like oh, sorry, McCarthy. I said nay. I was watching a thing about the Beatles earlier on. Anyway, I see Celtic fans aren't too pleased with that either. Never really played, did they? No. And Rogers, we trust. I think they need to bring back Shane Duffy. She's one of his wee Irish pals. Different Ireland, but... I've heard Donny van de Beek was linked in the weirdest thing I've heard all week. And the, the weirdest thing you heard last week was Scott McTominay being linked. Yeah. Who's, ne- who's next week? Che Guevara. Oh. <laughs> Linda McCartney. Lyndon Dice. <laughs> right. Uh, <More. laughs> well, well, uh, Mitrovic wants to leave Fulham for the Saudi League. This isn't... Is he for years? Confirmed, yeah, but he wants to. Al Halal for 25 million being rejected. I don't know if you can see this, guys, but I think we're experiencing our first technical difficulties. No, no, I've heard him. I heard him that time. Al Halal for 25 and a half million has been rejected. I mean, he Laughing. said it, but it was at the time of his face, and now his mouth's mm. just moving and not saying anything. Yeah. Anyway, um, I think what I he mean, did say was. We'll repeat that. Mitrovic wants to leave Fulham to Saudi with Al Halal. Apparently, twenty five and a half been rejected. I mean, it's a nice easy. Pay That's what I said. Yes. 
Yeah, it was a bit bitty, but and on my one, I don't know. I think Greg's was the same. Yeah. Oh, well. It, it's a nice payday. Um, I'm interested in your thoughts on this. It's good you put a Saudi one in here because we, we spoke a lot about Saudi League picking off players, right? But then you see kind of like round you up, you look at Shabashlai, you look at Tanali. Like the Premier League just does the same thing from other leagues. And we don't criticize the Premier League. We're only criticizing the Saudi League that's in Saudi Arabia. And I get there's morals associated with that. But every other league just does the same for the Premier League these days. I suppose there's one way to look at it. If, if you look at the best players in every league kicking about, they're all like, they, they all seem to gravitate towards the Premier League. Yeah. Is Europe, you get like European, like the big, big games, big matches. You do, but it's becoming increasingly English centric because the Premier League has a ton of money and they can just buy whoever the hell they want. Yeah, that's, a, that's true, actually. Well, like the idea that Aston Villa can buy a pretty good centre centre half, Spain cap centre half, for thirty three million pounds says a lot. I don't, you know, you wouldn't really see a side that finished what seventh in France or Germany or Spain or Italy being able to pull out that kind of money. Yeah, that's very true, actually. Uh, maybe yep. one, maybe one for some uh, further conversation on it because I know we have discussed it. So yeah, good point, Gregory. Yeah, just right. this is just the last one. Unless you have anything else to add, no. Yeah. I, I do after your Liam Balogun. Yeah. yeah, it's just Liam Balogun's rejoined Rangers due to Liam King, Leon King, doing a right number on himself. He sees an injury, which is a bit gotten for him, but it's just one of those things, isn't it? Balabak, so. Yes. He's brutal, that one. Look at him. Leave a dick. Come on. Right. Gregory, what was your one you wanted to add? Um, uh, two to add. One in the other Saudi news. Hakim Ziyech is also apparently on the list of people who are disappearing over there. I'm sure Chelsea fans will be devastated that someone who's not done very much is leaving. Yeah, sure. Um, the other one is that um, Tottenham, Ange Postacoglu has made a signing. He signed Manor Solomon. The Israeli I've winger who was at Fulham last season and played very, very well. He got me a lot of fantasy football points. I don't know too much about him, to be honest. I was going to put it in here, but when I was looking, it was like just what ifs and maybe, and I thought, to hell with it. But yes, he has signed. He looked very good at Fulham last year. I think that questions who's leaving Spurs because, again, wingers, they've got some. Quite a few players in those positions, thinking Richarlison. Lucas Moura's left, hasn't he? Yeah. I believe but so. Is he filling Maybe that gap? Young. Probably. Yeah, he played left wing back for a bit. He's kind of like There's... left wing. Yeah. Left back, yeah. yeah. Right, there we go. That brings us to the end of this week's transfers. Thank you very much for the update, Kyle. Right, Greg, it's your time to shine again. Yes. It is the new quiz, which I was going to make a jingle for and haven't bothered. Um, it's the new my, quiz. That's my new, on my to-do list. Um, but, yeah, we're just going to kick off without the thrills and all that, yeah. Yes, so this quiz uh, we're calling, or this I am calling, the starting 11. Um, the idea is that you get two and a half minutes, which Robert is going to time for us, uh, and I might try and find a way to put on the screen. Um you have to answer 11 questions. You start at number one, you finish at number 11. So we'll talk about players who have wore those numbers. Um, you get as many wrong answers as you want to each question, but you can only move on to the next one when you've got an answer correct. Uh, you get three switches where if you say switch, I can give you a second question for that number um, for you to have a second go at that question. So Kyle's going to have a go this week, get his name on the leaderboard. We've got a nice leaderboard. So that way, when we have guests on, Robert can have a go. When we have guests on, we can see who is at the top of the leaderboard. Yes. So, Kyle, the first question is, there are two sets of questions. Would you like set number one or set number two? Two. Set number two. Right. Robert, two and a half minutes on the clock. Right, I'm ready. Your time will start, Kyle, when I finish your first question which is on number one. 
Ready? Yes. This player wore number one as Portugal won Euro 2016. Rui Petrosio. Correct. Number two. This striker chose the number two shirt for his move to Reading in 2022. Oh, Andy Carroll. Correct. Number three. This player captained Senegal to the 2022 Africa Cup of Nations title. Sadio Mane? No. Incorrect. Abubakar? He's not even Senegalese. Incorrect. He wore number three when he done it. Number three? What was all left back? Hmm. Uh, Remember, there's... you can switch. Yeah, but see, he's a switch. Uh, this switch, this player wore number three and scored the opening goal of the Euro 2020 final. Very mental, it was Luke Shaw. It was Luke Shaw, number four. Yeah. This player wore number four in his final season for Partick last year. His final season? Kevin Hall. No. Correct. Number five, this West Ham player wore number five for Germany at the 2022 World Cup. Hilo Kehera. Correct. Robert, how are we doing for time? Number I'm six. Better. This ex-Liverpool player also wore number six while playing alongside his brother for Norway. Risa? No. Which one? John Arna. John Arna Risa is correct. Number seven. This then Liverpool player wore number seven for his country as he started the 2010 World Cup final. In, to, in, no, uh, Torres. Nope. Dark Kite. Correct. Number eight, this Brazilian moved from number 11 to number eight after Frank Lampard left Chelsea. Let's go. Correct. Number nine, this player is the current wearer of Celtic's number nine shirt. Oh. We've got 10 seconds, Robert Tellen. No. Haksabanovic. Correct. Number 10, this Hungarian scored 156 goals Fish for Real Madrid. Correct. Number 11, this England international wore number 11 as Brentford lost the 2020 playoff final. Say that again, please. This England international wore number 11 as Brentford lost the 2020 playoff final. 30 seconds Tony. left. 30? Yeah. What did you say, Kyle? Ivan Tony. No. Switch them. Take it in Brentford. Switch. This number 11 holds the record for the most goals scored at a World Cup. Closer. Correct. Stop the clock. There we go. Um, How long did he have left? Maybe you can see that on the screen. Two back to front of it. Uh, it has on 2 minutes 18 and 0.85, so I don't know if you want to round it up or not. Yes, we'll round that up to 2, two minutes, minutes 19. 19. It's after 50. It's, up 50. it's after 30 seconds. So, so, so Kyle, seconds Kyle had 11 seconds left, and that will go on the leaderboard. Well done, Kyle. You managed to complete the game. Um, the two that you switched on, um, this player, Captain Senegal's the 2022 Africa Cup of Nations title. It was Kaladu Koulibaly. I would never have got that. Uh, and number 11, this England international wore number 11 as Brentford lost the 2020 playoff final. That was Ollie Watkins. I, uh, I, I was thinking, I think I got all embargoes, actually. Yes, Robert Robert tested this set of questions for me. So congratulations, Kyle. We'll see how other people get on with that quiz. But that is the new quiz. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, and let us know how you got on at home. Yeah, please do. Right, so 2 minutes and 19 is the team to beat... Uh, well done, Kyle. That was quite, that was quite good running, I would say. Yes. Uh, and that brings us to an end for this week. So thank you very much for tuning in. Um, just the thanks again for last week. We're, we're happy with how that turned out. So yeah, yeah thank you very much. Yeah. Usual, subscribe and all that. If you haven't, please like and do all the uh, interacting as usual. Yeah. And we will catch you next week. See you later. See you. Godspeed.